doctor He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul Oh, in sorrow he's your comfort In trouble he's your stay He tells you every day on him to The bright and morning star, he's the fairest of ten thousand to your soul. Oh, in sorrow he's your comfort, in trouble is your stay. He tells you every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to your soul. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and once more, good morning. God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. I have no idea why Facebook is still showing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for being a part of this fellowship. Thank you for always showing up. We are very grateful for you. Uh, let's just start with a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, buddy, we are grateful for you. We're grateful for all that you're doing. We're grateful that you brought us this far, this year, in this month, and this 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 theme. We are looking on you hopefully, expecting you, Lord, and we are seeking to finish great. And so as we continue to come into your holy presence, you continue to work great and mighty things among us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you, oh Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you, I believe in you, my Savior. The living God, I believe in you, I believe in you, oh Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you, Lord, I believe in you. I believe in you, I believe in you, Jesus, the Son of God, we believe in you, Lord, we believe in you. Oh, Jesus, our only God, we believe in you, we believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you, Lord, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are Yahweh. 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 Alpha. And Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha 
Hallelujah. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Indeed, there is no name that is as sweet as as that is as amazing as Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I truly do appreciate you and I'm grateful that you have taken our time out of your busy schedule to be with us this morning. We are not taking it for granted. I pray that your time, your sacrifice this morning be productive, whether it is morning or afternoon or evening, depending on your time zone. We really do, do appreciate you. Of course, we are live on Facebook. For some reason, I've been having a glitch. I've not been able to get on Instagram for the last two weeks, but we are live on Facebook. Please, I beg of you, there's no greater request I'll ask of you guys than to go ahead and share the video. That is all you need to do for us. Please share the video and be a blessing to somebody. Allow God to do the rest. You just go ahead and hit the share button and be a blessing to someone. So if you're watching me on Facebook, the link, of course, you're watching us because we are live. Just go ahead and share the video and be a blessing to somebody. And for those of you who are part of the WhatsApp, that's the Zoom platform, you should know better by now the link the live link is already shared on the whatsapp group all you need to do is click on that link share it on forward it on your status put it on share it on facebook and be a blessing to somebody and while you're doing that because i have already done it i want to officially welcome you to the transforming woman fellowship in short it is called ttw the scripture we have for this man is the second Corinthians chapter three verse 18 which says but we all we unveil faces beholding us in the mirror the glory of the lord have been transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord and so what is this amazing ministry all about it is an interdominational gathering of women regardless of their age or status for fellowship to behold the face of our master jesus christ and in the course of that we evaluate ourselves daily not for condemnation but for spiritual good it is a place where women are trained to thrive, understand time, season, and stand the gap in the place for, and stand the gap in the place of prayer for themselves, their family, and the nation. We use the word woman as per the title of the gathering instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman, depending on how hungry she is in need of the master's help. We gather for now every Monday to worship, share the word of God, and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies. It is a gathering of total surrender, and a place where we have only one objective and no alternative which is either jesus or jesus our mission is to gather to fellowship with the holy spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good our vision is to raise a generation of women who are passionate for god they are conscious of their life in the sacred they are ready to fulfill purpose enjoy marriage and promote godly parenting our values are love humility compassion giving excellent self-control and sacrifice as said you are very much welcome to today's fellowship can you let me know if the fan i have the ceiling fan on if it's not an issue then that's fine um so whatever you have on your screen right there for those of you who are watching us on the social media platform this is specifically for you if this ministry has been a blessing to you in any form Please, this is the way you could reach out to us. If you have a testimony, a request, whatever it may be, whatever you want to share with us, change life, we are, you know, willing and ready to hear your story. Share with us any information you think that is related to this fellowship through our email, which is the Transforming Woman 2020 at gmail.com. Or you could text us on either of the social media platforms or handle on Facebook is the Transforming Woman Fellowship and on Instagram it is ttw fellowship on youtube it is the transforming woman fellowship as well and someone is definitely going to respond to you and we do appreciate all your efforts and all your sacrifices you have been doing over the past years hallelujah we are rounding off today with the month and this is the last monday in the month of thank you it's the last monday in the month of october and it's amazing every day my heart is filled with gratitude i'm like god how are you doing it and we are just so grateful that he keeps helping us week by week week by week and we are rounding off with finishing on the victory note today it is i hope that this month has been a blessing to you there's something you have been able to take that you will be able to use it throughout the year as we round off in the next two months, the chapter of 2024. Hallelujah. So it's been an amazing ride. So today we are going to complete that topic. And I am trusting God to 
use his word as always to touch a particular person out there that the word was intended for and at the end of the day he's going to take his glory and let's just go ahead and pray before we start father we just want to thank you what a privilege to be alive what an opportunity to even be in your presence we cannot take it for granted we thank you so much we thank you i mean what are not enough to express to you the level of gratitude in our hearts to be opportune to be here this morning to hear from you and to eat from your word this morning. We thank you for your word that is about to come forth, the word that gives life, the word that renews, the word, the word that can transform, the word that can change any situation around, the word that can comfort, the word that can change situations. Father, we thank you for this word we are about to listen. We ask for hearts that are ready to receive from you. We pray for faith to be able to receive your word so that it going to walk deep into our hearts we ask oh father that you take away every form of distraction in and around us this morning we pray that the spirit of the almighty god will bring the word to each and every one of us in such a simplified manner that your word will begin to profit us and profit everything that has to do with us this morning spirit of the most high god i ask that you will take absolute control over this day i take authority over the god of this world that chooses to blind the hearts of men i decree that no man under the sound of my voice is going to fall for the trap of the enemy this morning and i yield myself before you as always thanking you for always helping me every time i have the privilege to bring forth your word this morning i'm submitting myself again to you and i ask that you will touch my mouth this morning with the coal of fire i pray that you bring forth your counsel through me this morning because i'm simply a vessel i pray that the world the words of my mouth this morning will not be condemned or used against me i pray that the words that you are going to put in my mouth this morning will not be rejected i pray that from this place where i am to wherever your people are watching me let there be a free flow of your word from this particular order to there to them in the name of jesus christ let your word begin to bring around transformation in our lives that will be visible for all to see have your way this morning father and i pray that you will take all the glory when you are done with us in jesus much this name we have prayed amen and amen can everybody say amen so this morning, I'll be sharing on what I tie to the confidence of a finisher. So remember the word, I use the word the finisher. So I'm talking about us as individuals, the confidence of a finisher. If anybody finishes something, you call the finisher. So the confidence of a finisher, it's what we are, it's what we're going to be looking at this morning. And I pray that God will help me to be able to bring forth this word. But what, what do we mean by confidence? We have been looking at various things. We have established various things in this month of finishing. But I want us to talk about a particular confidence we are supposed to have that will help us to be able to finish and not just finish, finish on a victory note. If I go to the dictionary, what the dictionary tells me, I just picked out two definitions of the word confidence. It's the state of feeling certain about the truth now not about rumors but about the truth of something or somebody when you get to that point where you are certain that this thing is it's 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 the truth that that mindset you have the conviction you have about something being true it can be about a particular thing or it can be towards somebody and i think the word confidence is something we all know because each and every one of us at one point or the other, we need some level of confidence, you know, with each other before we could be able to build a relationship, which I think I will go there. So the second definition I have is it is having no doubt about yourself. You know, they always teach us that you need to have self-confidence. There's something called self-confidence, right? Although I'm not talking about self-confidence this morning, but just by defining the word confidence, I just want to um, bring that highlight out so it is having no doubt either about yourself or about somebody else's ability having no doubt either about your own self or about somebody else's ability so the, the latter part of that definition is, is my point of emphasis having no doubt about somebody else's ability and just like what i said before i define the second uh, um um, the definition of confidence, I said that each and every one of us, we will need some level of confidence, some level of conviction before we get into relationship with people. 
some of the synonyms of confidence when we talk about confidence we're talking about trust we are talking about belief we are talking about faith we are talking about conviction we are talking about dependence your your the ability for you to be able to depend on somebody you say ah, this person is my friend or this person is my sister oh so there are some people that if somebody says ah, you want they are looking for somebody to do business you are looking say, ah, i will i will recommend this person and uh, why do you recommend this person it's because i trust this person so we kind of use that word interchangeably i trust this person i can depend on this person some people will even say ah if i i know if i'm not here or if something happens to me, I know people will say, I know if something happens to me, if I die, God forbid, so so and so person, my children will never suffer because of this person. Why would they use such a word? They believe that they have some level of trust towards this person. They could depend on that person. That even if they are not there, even if they don't have the opportunity to do certain things at certain times, if that person is around, that person should be able to step in on their behalf. So we all need some level of trust at one point or the other as we have interrelationship with men. Although some in the scripture we have seen it, the Bible says, cause is a man that puts his trust on a man. We must understand that we're just talking about man putting confidence in man. Most often, we as human beings, as we grow older, we kind of, at one point in our life, maybe we trust that depending on where you're coming from, if you're coming from a well-furnished and beautiful um, financial buoyant family, maybe your, your trust is in your parents, knowing that, okay, no matter what, at any given point in, in time, they are going to come through, they are going to do this, I will never lack fees. But maybe if you are coming from a family that is not too stable financially, maybe at one point you had one of your uncle, your aunties out of the country, you kind of somehow put your hopes in that. Now what the scripture is asking us to do, is not that you don't need trust at any level. Of course, trust is needed in any relationship i'm not talking about romantic relationship any relationship you establish in life before you can tell before you can be able to trust people with your information with your confidentiality there should be something about them that makes you know that okay this person can handle this level of information i'm telling them before you go ahead so but what god is expecting from us is that man cannot we cannot our totality you know we cannot put our trust in man totally it means there should be some level of reservation so that just for adventure something happen you should be able to stand up and rise up again and move forward you hear people saying that you know i don't want to have anything to do with anybody i don't not have any friend i'm going to be an island and all the rest it's simply because they got to that point where man became their total they, they trusted in man totally and that's what god you know does not want us to do but he, he does not eradicate the fact that trust is needed at one point or the other but this morning i'm i'm tilting that form of confidence remember i can use the words interchangeably whether i use trust or i use confidence or i use conviction or i use dependence they are all the same thing but since we are talking about the finisher this morning so we'll be looking at it from that perspective right we'll be tilting what am i expecting or what is the holy ghost planning to convey to us and teaching us this morning what kind of confidence do we need since it's not a new word somehow even our little kids kind of know oh I, this one is my friend because ah, she did this or she's like this oh i can trust her i feel confident around the person so since the word is not new but with regards to the theme and the topic what are we expected to know and what is god's even expectation for us is what i want to you know highlight this morning i want us to start from philippians chapter one which is my case study it's not a case study but that is my focal scripture for this morning philippians chapter one verse six it's a very common scripture but we are trusting god to help us you know open our eyes to what he wants us to learn this morning the scripture says being confident of this very Everything. You know, sometimes we can get so familiar with the scripture that we just read it like that. It, it, it's more like a song, but it doesn't make so much meaning to our heart. Being confident. You see, we are talking about confidence this morning. So the ability for you to have a strong conviction of this very thing that he who has begun. So it has started already because it's using the past tense. 
a good work in you remember at this point it is being personalized it is not generalized he who has started a good he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of jesus christ thank you so much for the scripture as i said it's going to be my anchor scripture this morning but permit me remind you who the author of this uh, particular philippians was it was paul who wrote a letter he at this point he was he wrote a letter to the philippians right so this was a letter he wrote but it is important for us to know where he was at this point when he wrote this letter the state where he was at this point because it, it will help us build the right foundation as we move forward paul was writing to the philippians and he was telling them i want you to be confident of this very thing now if you read that philippians chapter 1 verse 6 there is nothing that looks like there was doubt it's, it's, it's a verse that carries so much conviction, so much authority and so much assurance that you could tell that no, beyond the words, this person knows what he's writing. But I will want to remind us this morning, I know most of us know, that when Paul was writing the letter to the Philippians, number one, he was writing because he wasn't there. So that was the means he had to get to them. He was actually in prison at this time. And so just when I got up, no, not very early, before I could go to bed early this morning, I mean, I was just reflecting because I needed to remind myself, where was this man? He was in jail. He was in prison. Now, let's just, let's just think about this just for a moment, you and I. You know, there are prison situations, whether it is not, I've never been to jail before, and it's nothing you wish for anybody. Because the greatest disadvantage you can ever have in your life is when freedom is taken away from you. There are so many things you better desire they take away from you, but they shouldn't, you shouldn't get to a point where your freedom is taken away from you. That is the greatest punishment you can give anybody. But we see that at this point of Paul's life, he was in jail, he was in prison, and he still had the opportunity to mentor, to teach, to encourage. But my question is, now, the state of his life at that moment, the kind of things he wrote, he wasn't saying it, he was saying it, it was something that was coming from the place of his own personal experience. It was something that was coming from the place of his conviction because we develop conviction as a result of our experience. You cannot just be so convinced, most often, the true conviction, when you get to that place where there are certain things about maybe even your work with God, that no matter how your pastor preaches it, no matter how you come to TCW, we talk about it. If you get to the place of conviction, you discover that your response towards that thing is different. And you also discover that you will not be easily swayed or manipulated once you have gotten to the place of conviction. But where there is no conviction, it is easier for you to, you know, go out and come in, go out because you don't even know which one is the truth. But when you get to the place where you have experienced it firsthand and you know without any doubt, when somebody speaks, you could bear witness with that person. So this was Paul's situation. I mean, you imagine that at this point, regardless of how spiritual you are, when you get to that season of your life, when things are not actually the way you would have expected it to be, the least you will expect will be you being able to encourage other people or being able to check out for the well-being of other people. Most people say, I have not even finished with myself because the load was too much. But this is somebody being in jail. Now, it is easier. Two things, a lot of things the Holy Spirit laid in my heart while I was meditating on that scripture. And Paul began to write to the people of Philippians. Now, they had accepted Jesus. They had salvation. And they were working with God. But of course, he knew that he needed to tell them something that would be able to carry them through. But eventually, he's no longer there with them. He needed to prepare them for the future. He needed to prepare them for that which was ahead of them. And he said to you, please, there is one thing I beg of you. Because I am talking from the place of conviction that you should be confident in this thing. You are on a journey. There is something that God has started. 
when you do some sort of research on this Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, most Bible scholars will, will you know, we narrow that walk as being the walk of salvation. But I'm here to let you know, as right as that is, the only thing God um, um, is doing in your life is not just salvation. Meaning that even after salvation, there are things that are ongoing and there are things that you see experience in the future that God is working through you. And I believe that Paul was not just limiting his word just to the salvation of the souls of the Philippians, but to everything that God is working in and through their lives. And so he came in with this conviction and said, I want to let you know regardless he was not even looking at his present situation that's what really blew my mind that he was in prison and he was talking from such conviction you know when some when things are working out all right sometimes when people talk it'll be easier for us to think that okay it is just simply because you are in the best of position and everything seems to be aligned in your life but for somebody to be in this situation it's not like he has been released he's just coming from jail he's still inside of jail where he does not have the free Dumb. and he still has this conviction about the god he's serving he knows that somehow there's no way that this my father he's talking about could ever begin and do not finish and so that was the message he was giving another thing the holy spirit laid in my heart i'm still laying the foundation was that you know the the people he was writing the letter to that's the philippians right they did not they received the word they did not say ah, ah you know you are in jail what do you have i mean if it's in this our dispensation I, I expect some reactions like that you know what do you have to offer if this god starts and finish why are you still in jail if you are so confident about this same god how come he has not been able to deliver you and they, 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 the thing that really humbled me about Paul's life is that you will not imagine that throughout Paul's life he went god forbid that I ever go through that kind of persecution. He went through so many persecutions. He went through so many backbiting where he was he was locked up so many times. He was being accused. He was killed and everything. You know, all through his journey of all these accusations and everything, do you know that Paul testified that he's actually going through this thing so that his life can be used for the fortress of the kingdom? I'm like, what level of confidence can a man have? He had the conviction that everything that he was passing through was to be used for the fortress to advance God's kingdom, to instead recruit more people. I mean, that would have been vice versa, but that is the conviction he had. So Paul has so worked with God. He had had an encounter with God that made him to be confident that God is a perfecter. Now, one of the things I want you to learn about the finisher is that the strength of the finisher only comes from first having the courage to start. It means that one of the things you need to ask yourself, if nothing has been started, then it is okay for you to, to lose heart. But the question you ask yourself as a finisher and the one who intends to finish confidently or victoriously is has he started it? Has God started it? Because we can see if we go back and see this person that Paul is talking about. He said, being confident of this one thing, that he who has started a, the good work, he will be gone. It means that it is already established. Something has been started. Now, Paul did not know when he was going to end. Paul did not know what time it will end, but he was assuring the Philippians and he's assuring you and I this morning as we begin to, you know, go towards the end of another season that if God has started, you should be assured. There must be this conviction you carry inside of you because for you to be able to finish strong, you should be able to have this conviction inside of you that just because it is started, then there is a possibility that it must be finished. Now, let's even go back from the very beginning. God started with the creation of the whole world, right? That's one of the projects. Just in case, let's, let's keep ourselves. He started with the, the, the creation of the whole world. We know the story of how the six days, this man began to put things in place, began to put things in place. How many of us, if I let me just match everything together, he, he created everything for him. He looked at it to be nice. There are so many things that 
uh, I may look at it to be nice, but for you, it might not be nice because we all have different tastes in life. We all have different uh, uh, um, appetites in life. So something that may look desirable to you must not look desirable to me. That's the way we have been. That's the way human beings are. But when God did all of those things, he looked at it to be nice. So, and he felt it was nice, right? Now, when he came, he also created man. I, I mean, I, just reflecting on the thing, he came to man. Have you ever thought about it? From the dust, from the mud, the scriptures tell us he created man. And just look at, maybe now you are looking at me because I might not be able to see people you know, faces, but looking at me as one of the creators or creations that God made, how he was able to take moth and form man is something for another day that I don't know if anybody has the answer. We don't know the answer, right? But this was a project he started from the beginning. He started creating the heavens and the earth. He was establishing the stars, separated the water from the land, you know, created all the animals and all the rest. And then he now used mud to form man how he the mud how he designed the mud and the mud turned to eyes how he turned to nose how he turned to mouth it's a mystery on its own and then after that he now said he removed rib from the man now from the woman it's a mystery in fact now the, the worst mysteries that one has been created now he now made a possibility that a child begins to form in a womb now the question is where does that child is there any spare parts kept in anybody's womb that when a child is forming it creates the intestine it creates the heart the heart beats you know the brain where is it coming from you know there's any things that if we begin to think but we are looking at some of the projects he started even before you were born even before you were created we want to look at the integrity of this person we are talking about. We know that trust is important, but we are talking about the kind of confidence you will need to be able to finish as a victor. The kind of confidence you will need to be able to finish in victory. And so God was creating all of these things. And you begin to establish, you begin to think, okay, how does this child... Now, even if you look at the way science does it from the beginning, it's not something you like to see with your physical eyes. But at the end of the day, how does this thing come out? In a perfect shape if you look at the way the child is being formed from two months three months ah you will not like to see that kind of image so how does god take something that is looking so bad it's looking so unamirable and then makes it at the end of the day the thing looks so nice what is in the womb that waste where are the parts coming from in fact the questions are many but guess what up till now i don't know about you I don't know if you have seen anything that God has created. As you are walking around, as you drive around, is there anything you have seen that he has created? That you look at it, you yourself, you know, most often in other things we look at them. You yourself, you look at that thing, you are like, ah, God did not try with this one. If he would have made it, if the nose would have been two, he would have been more better. Eh? That thing that everybody has one nose is not nice. Have you ever got into that point? where you look at anything, anything being from being to, to trees, to their beauty, to everything, where you feel like, ah, you know, sometimes we can come in and say, ah, if, if, you know, human beings, if, if you would have made it like that, it would have been better, it would have been best if this tree would have had this shape, it would have been best if the birds would have, you know, been like human beings and human beings like birds, like birds. You know, when he was doing this, none of us contributed to these things. He successfully started a project like this. And then he finished it. And then when he finished, even though he said it was nice, we too, we have come to see that, ah, truly, this man knows how to organize. We have no complaint about creation. Because we can testify everything. In fact, we, what do we even know that would have been thinking, okay, maybe if you would have done it like this, how will your face look if you had two nose? Because there's just a perfect structure. And we believe, or I have the conviction, that there couldn't, be a, there, there couldn't have been a better way. We are just going back while coming to the confidence that we, you and I should have. Not just the confidence that God has, but the confidence that you and I. And these are the things that will develop your confidence. And then when you finish all of these things, looking so nice, we are using them. We feel like, in fact, even science... I'm seeing the new one about robots and all the rest. I'm like, God must have mercy. But one thing that science have not been able to do, and science will not be able to do, 
Because everything you see science doing, they only take from God's word material. So nobody, none of us, even the ones who are trying to push us, if no, God did not, it's not, he's not too intelligent. You discover that they still use what he has made from the beginning to be able to, and God gave them the wisdom, even though some people use the following wisdom, like I thought the other time, you know, to be able to come out with all of these things, science and all these things that are coming up. So nobody's actually the originator of those ideas. They still use, they will still forever use God's ideas because all raw materials be, uh, began with him. Now, when God finished with all of that and finished with creation, we see the part in the New Testament where salvation was supposed to come in. The amazing thing about salvation was another project. And this one, the most important project for mankind, the most important. And we know that the scripture has made it very clear to us that he sent Jesus Christ. He was the one who was supposed to carry out this project. Eh? He was the one who was supposed to carry out this project. And he came here on earth. It's like there was a plan, an outline that he had to follow. The beginning is the fact that he was born. Like you and I, just the fact that we are born, a project has been started already. And that is why Paul was confident that he had begun something. Even though it talks about the, the, the project of salvation, but it is not limited to the project of salvation. Because all God is expecting for you is not just to give your life to Christ, it's to be able to use your life for his glory here on planet Earth. And so he started this great project of salvation. And then he wired Jesus onto planet Earth. And then Jesus was the one who was supposed to help establish this project to the finish line. Of course, we know the story of Jesus. We know that in the course of him carrying out that project, it wasn't an easy thing. Like most of us, you know, throughout our lives, some people, 2024 has been a year of turbulence. Some people disappointment. Some people losses. Some people pleasure. Some people gain. You know, people have different, you know, every year it's a new project that the Father has opened unto you. And he has kept so many things, using so many things to walk in side and through you and so jesus started his own project and his project was to make sure that salvation will be completed but the most amazing thing about salvation was that we know that god started what happened he completed the project of salvation but one thing i want to remind you about the project of salvation was that at this time eh, scripture made it clear to us we are talking about the father scripture made it very clear to us that when this project of salvation started, number one, they didn't ask your permission to start. Number two, at that time, the Bible says that we are his enemies. Hmm. It means that at that particular moment, we had no relationship. There was so much disconnection. Enemies means there was no love for him, no regard for him. Please pay attention to what I'm saying now. No regard for him. Yet, he still went ahead carrying out a project on you and I, our behalf, even though we were not close to him. He started the project. He would have, because of our attitude, because of our response to the things he was trying to do, which an average human being like you and I would do in any normal circumstance, he would have done what he would have ended the project. But the project of salvation, God made it possible to be completed even when we despise him, even when we were far from him, even when the Bible says we were his enemies. Now I pose this question to you. If God can start a project and finish it when you did not even know that that thing mattered to you, what will he do now in your life that you are his friend? In fact, let's forget about God. If I hear of anybody buying my case somewhere, defending me or giving me gifts, when I am consciously backbiting the person, consciously talking bad about the person, consciously making sure that that person goes down, and then this person still shows me good, and then maybe after a period of time, I come and meet the person and say, I'm so sorry. Ah, the way you have showered me with goodness, I don't understand. I, I feel very guilty. After all what I've done for you, I now meet the person. I say, I'm sorry for everything I've said concerning you. All those things are lies. I'm very sorry. Please, you know, forgive me. Be my friend. Do you think that that person says, oh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm forgiving you. I hold nothing against you. Do you think that if that person forgives me, 
and now I'm the friend of that person. If that person could do things for me when I neglected that person, what would the person now do now that I'm the person's friend? Will that person gives me give me greater gifts, or will the person will hold his hand for me? So the question is: if Jesus could complete this project of salvation when we all despise him, when we're all his enemies, what will he do now that you and I have become his friends? Now that you and I have become his sons, will God not complete it if he could do that when we're enemies? What will happen? Will God not complete? Sometimes it's just a problem of reflection. Thinking of this man, because I know that circumstances can take us to the point where we'll be like, can he really do it? I've told you that unless it has not been started, unless it has not been started, and if you were born, then the project has been started. If he has taken you to a particular stage, he is faithful to complete it. It is a word you have heard, but I don't just want you to carry the word. If you don't carry the word with this conviction I'm talking about this morning, and with this understanding, you will just say it, but yet you'll be so drowned in your process. And you will not be able to finish as a victor. It's impossible. So God who did it for us at our worst relationship started and finished. In fact, when you look at the life of Jesus, even Jesus himself who was sent to carry out that particular project, <laughs> you know, in the process. And that is why I just remember, that is why he had, you know, this confidence of a finisher. You remember that this was a project he was supposed to start. Of course, his own journey was 33 and a half years. So he was supposed to start this project and finish it. But along the line, the fact that he was born, that was the beginning of his assignment. Oh, a project had already started. And so he began to go through life in the course of carrying out this assignment. But in the course of it, so many things came. So many storms came through his life. And I'll always remember this same thing Jesus will always say. And I now think that, oh, that was the confidence he had in the Father. He was not boasting in his abilities. He was not boasting in his strength. He was not boasting in the fact that, oh, God sent me. He boasted in the abilities of his father. And that is why when we talk about confidence, it is having a strong conviction about someone else's ability. And that was the ability that Jesus had. And that is why when you read the life of Jesus so many times, it was written and recorded according to his own story that this is the number of years he was going to live. And so, so many times we see throughout the scripture, they wanted to kill him. But this one word he kept saying, he said, the time has not yet come. What gave him that audacity and confidence and authority? Because he was what a project. He came to carry out a project and for salvation to be completed. He couldn't die before the time designated for salvation to be completed. And so it was that confidence he had in the Father that made him to be able to finish as a victor. And that is why his death became an advantage to you and I. And he kept saying, my time, <laughs> it's not your time. This is not what the Father has said. If he died at 28, salvation would have not been possible. Because that was not the roadmap for salvation. Now, why would the enemy deceive you so much that that thing, that challenge, hell challenge, or whatever thing, or that thing that has not been done by October, determines the end of your life? There must be a confidence you carry about what the Father has said concerning your own projects. I've told us, um, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I said this song kept, kept coming to my spirit. That you are a divine project and you can never be abandoned. You are a project to your God. Until God finishes his work in you, he can never leave you. <laughs> he can never leave you. Until God finishes a project in your life, God can never abandon you. Now, there's so, I like, I like, I like, I like um, what um, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. If you can put up the scripture. The Bible says, if you are faithless, that scripture, it says, if you are faithless, the Bible says what? It says, he remains what? Faithful. But he's not just remaining faithful just because he wants to be faithful. It's just because that is who he is. Hey, you can't separate faithfulness from him. He says, he cannot. He says, if we are faithless, the possibility of us being faithless, he says, he remains faithful. He cannot do what? He cannot de deny himself. <laughs> Thank you. You can't separate faithfulness from him because faithfulness is his personality. 
Faithfulness is who he is. <laughs> you know that some people you can't separate wickedness from them. And there are some people too, you can't separate kindness from them. They have gone to the point where maybe consciously they kept doing something and it becomes part and parcel of them. But even the best of that human being I'm talking about, see has flaws, but God was defining. It doesn't matter how unfaithful you are. You, are you seeing why there's some level of confidence and conviction you should have in the Father so that you can finish on a victory note? The Bible says that what you can, there is a tendency and possibility that at one time you can be faithless. He said, but he doesn't look at your action. When God begins, eh, the only problem, the only thing is that he should not begin. Now you can't hold him to his word if there's no beginning. But just that he has begun something. Paul was telling the Philippians, that be confident because i know somehow the enemy will come in along the way as you are working with god he says but i want you to have this confidence one thing i don't ask i'm not asking for too many things from you the scripture says that what it says god is faithful and he can't deny himself you cannot separate faithfulness from him no his faithfulness is god that's his personality that's his personality so he's stuck and committed to doing you good He's committed to making your life the way that he wants your life to be for his glory. He's stuck and committed to it. That's the father. We must learn to trust God. God's heart. Even in times when we don't see his hands. I'll give you an example of Job. We're talking about the confidence of a finisher. But before I even go to the example of Job. Why I was establishing all of these things is for you to understand that if our father has so much confidence in himself, in his ability, and throughout scriptures, we are seeing people who held on to that same confidence, even when life was not giving them the best offer, they could hold on to the ability of their father and they were able to finish strong. It means that you and I would need that level of confidence to finish our own. Finishing every year on a victory note is very important. It's the same spirit you are going to use to start another year. It's that thing you will need to pull on so that you don't become weary and weak. It's that thing that will keep you going so that you don't stay on the same spot. It's that thing that God will need to use it to showcase you to the world so that, you know, you'll be able to come out as gold. That confidence was one example is the life of job he had that confidence of who his father is let's look at job chapter 23 verse 8 to 9. i hope verse 10 is not the 8 to 9. thank you now this is job of course okay you can take up the scripture let me just give a little background of, i know everybody knows but for the purpose of the message let me give a little background we know job right when you read his story, the Bible tells us he was the, 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 the strongest man. He was the wealthiest. He was mighty among all the people of the East. Just imagine the kind of caliber, the status he had. He had all of these nice, nice things. We know the story, the conversation God had with Satan, and now things began to leave him. Things began to leave him. Out of ten children. The man lost everything. And see if it was not enough, his health became, his health was attacked. We know that, of course, oh, at one point, discouragement came in. A lot of things happened. But there's something we can extract when we're talking about this confidence. And that was what actually kept him. It's not the fact that there were not some days that he was weak. No, some days he, he would definitely be weak. But if you can hold on to your confidence in the Father, I might not have strength, but there is somebody that keeps me going. There is somebody because sometimes you will turn and say, how did I finish this race? How did I go through this pain? How, I mean, I can't believe it's eight years. I can't believe it's two years. How, how was I able to manage it? It's one year already. I felt I was, I was almost dying, but how did I manage it? That confidence you carry inside of you about the finisher is what keeps you going because your strength is not enough and so we see in job chapter 23 let's see what job said in job chapter 23 verse 8 to 9 the scripture says 
Job 23, 8 to 9. You can pull it up. He says, look, this was Job talking. Job said, look, I go forward. He said, but he's not there. You see that he's in capital. He's talking about God. He says, look, I go forward, but he is not what not there. I don't know if any of you have ever seen this kind of testimony in your own life. He says, and backwards. He said, but I cannot perceive him. He's neither dead or can, you know, not being there. It's like not being able to even see him physically. But I said that was not enough. He said, I cannot even perceive his presence. There's no sign to even show that he's even in the midst of anything. Verse 9 says that when he walks on the left hand, I cannot behold him to, to, to behold him. He says, when he turns to the right hand, I can't see him. Thank you for that scripture. Do you know what God, Job was doing here? Job was not only talking about his suffering. Job was not lamenting in this verse with regards to the pain. What really made his situation was at this point of the scripture, and what really made Job lament was the fact that, not the fact that he was suffering. It was the fact that he couldn't trace God in his predicament. It was the fact that he couldn't see his hand in it. You know, sometimes when you go through certain things in your life, hey, I don't know how to put it. There are certain things I don't know how to explain. There are certain things you will go through in life and you will look as if he's not there at all. He's not there. Now, this was what hurt Job the most in this particular context. It's not that he was going through pain. This was a man righteous in the ways of God. So he had worked with God. He knew God to a certain level. But he would have been more comforted for him to even be aware and have the assurance that God was with him. But at this verse 8 and verse 9, he was looking at the situation and he was concluding that even in this thing, my issue is that I can't even perceive you. It looks as if I'm on a lonely road. It would have been better if I could know that an angel was standing beside me, even though I'm going through the pain. But let me just know, you know, sometimes you can be so scared. <laughs> but you know, I don't know, even at night, if somebody's by you, small confidence will come in. Not that that thing has disappeared, but you just know that at least there's somebody. I've always said, even if there's a sense situation, you may be, let's say, three of you or four of you, maybe if you're in your group or your friend's group or something, or people you know, maybe if all of you have similar challenges, even the challenges are not the same, let's say you are looking for this, this other person is looking for this, and you know, it, 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 there's a way, it's not like your own thing, you know, you know, you have some pressure, but if God now answer sister A, you guys are five in the group, <laughs> answer sister B. Answer sister C, answer sister D, you're the only one left. There's a way that it hits you differently. Because not that you were rejoicing in their own predicament, but it, you know, there was some sort of comfort that ah, I'm not alone. <laughs> but when you get to that point where you begin to feel like, ah, <laughs> is this, is, is God really seeing me? Because we're in a group now. You know, sometimes as human beings, you think from that perspective. It's not like you are competing, but this person at least was, okay, I knew this person was waiting. I know this person, you know, is trusting God for this. Even though sometimes it may not be the same. For some people, it may be the same. You may be trusting God for something. Trusting God for to go to travel out of the country. You guys were six of you, five people traveled. Eh? The way you, the way you, be, you, that thing hits you now, it's different. It's when you start feeling, ah, ah, the issue before I was able to go through it. Because when I see this, my other sister, I'm comforted that, okay, God is still coming for us. But if I see that, I could see God's hand in this person's life. I could see that God has answered this person. Why, why am I not seeing him? This was where Job was. He couldn't perceive the presence of God in the situation. Even though he would have admired that that particular season passed over, but he would have been more confident and more better if he knew that, okay, at least even though it is not yet happening that this with me. And he lamented. He said, child, the issue is not the suffering. The issue is that I'm not seeing you. You are not in the situation. And most often it is when we are in the process. Remember, it's like starting a journey. Have they ever put you on a bridge that is, is, is going like that? There are certain fears in my life I've been able to conquer. I'll share that for another day. <laughs> Have you ever gotten to a point where you never knew you could do something? <laughs> Until you, you are faced with that thing. You do it. 
I mean, if you had an opportunity not to start, you will not start. I mean, it's just like even a woman who is in labor. Let's just use that, that, that example. The pain for some people, and then the point where they tell you, at this point, if you don't push, you're losing the baby. And you feel like you don't have enough strength. But you are faced with the option. It's either you let go and you lose the child, or you give your last and you have the victory. Now, if the labor did not start, that's another thing on its own. But just because the, you have got it to that point where it's delivery, you are stuck. So you have to choose the. So at that point, it's not all about my strength. Even if you have to push and die, you push and die. That's that's what happens at that point. You give in your all so that you don't lose that thing. So at that point, nobody's doing it because they wanted to. They don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. Sometimes we don't choose the battles we experience. We don't choose it. God takes you, launches you into it. And now the problem is the process. But if you finish, you must have the confidence of a victim. And that confidence is not either in your beauty or your abilities. It is the fact that if he is the one who started, he will complete it. If you could finish salvation, if there's one thing you take, then this one too, you'll finish it. And so you see how, as I said, Job was lamenting. But when he lamented in verse 8 and verse 9, you think that he just left at that state. No, and that's where most of us are. When the devil has so much cryptos, it can look like, it, it, it looks like the truth because I'm very sure, of course, God was silent. And God was watching. Now, there's one thing I've discovered about God. And, you know, it's not something that we like as individuals, but that's the reality. And I think that what made God act like that is because of the confidence of his ability. Where was God when Job was going through this kind of pain? In fact, where is God when you are going through this thing? Do you think the scripture says that God does not sleep nor what slumber? You can imagine, even the greatest people we have, we know the ex-American president, how they have attempted assassination over his life twice. In fact, with all the logistics put in place that they could detect a, a, a gun from far, people still try their best to attempt to kill with all the security and everything they have in place, bulletproof cars, bullet this, that, and everything you can imagine, the life of an individual is still not assured. And the scripture presents to us a human being, a man, sorry, that the scripture says he does not sleep, no slumber. So you can sleep and wake up in the morning because somebody's awake. But the problem is if you have the conviction. Because it is only in the conviction you should be able to write on this strength I'm talking about. Where the conviction is there, you can't write on the strength you fall. That truly, he's not sleeping. So even though he doesn't seem physically present, but he's awake. Meaning he's aware of every single detail. The process sometimes may look very ugly. Have you ever seen, have you ever thought of, just like the example I gave, even if you look from science, go check how a child is developing. If they show you a child of four months, if you like to see it. Go, go check children that were born with mature, if you like to behold them. But how is it that when the process is over, the end of it looks so beautiful? And so sometimes when we're in that process, it looks so muddy, it doesn't look well, and it looks as if he's not there. But the scripture says he does not sleep, neither does he want slumber. So I can have the confidence to sleep. Now, if I'm not sleeping too and he's not sleeping, what good does he help me? And so after Job thought about those things, but he, he now realized himself. And that's why I don't want you to end at the point where you know that you are going through this thing. It looks as though he has not answered Oh, he visited my neighbor. Oh, and, and then what will happen is that doing sources in your life, you'll be hearing testimonies of other people. Eh? God has done this. Ah, this is the other person, this other person. Eh? In fact, people will even be using you as examples. It can be so disheartening. If you don't have the confidence in the finisher, knowing that your situation is unique, your life is unique, your story is unique, your challenges are unique, and your end product will be unique you fall along the path of the way. 
But let's see verse 10 of that same, you know, Job chapter 23. After we have read verse 8 to 9, and we see that he couldn't find God. But look at what kept this man. Look at it. Look at what kept Job. That's, that's why he was able to finish. He now says, but he knows. Does that look like some assurance? Even though I'm not seeing him, even though he's not there, even though I can't perceive his presence, even though it looks as if he's not part of the situation, he looks as if he has forgotten me. He looks as if he has gone to sleep, even though they say he cannot sleep. Verse 10 says, but he knows. It was the same job talking in verse 10. He says, but he knows what the way that I should take. Hi, my God. Have you ever been walking on a path? Because at this point, he didn't even know where he was going to. He just knew that uh, there's somebody that is leading him. He knows the way I should take. I may not be aware, but the confidence, this is where I can, this is the place I can hold on to, that there's someone who knows where he's taking me to. <laughs> I'm not aware of the journey ahead, but he knows the way I should take. This is where, this is the confidence that kept Job, even when disappointment kept coming in and out. The Bible says, he said, when he has tested me, <laughs> it's not when he may. He said, when he has tested me, what this is Job's confidence. Was he going here? No, he was like mud in this place. But this is his confidence. This is his assurance. This is his declaration, even in pain. He said, but he knows the way. Not I know. At this point, Job knew nothing about himself. He was, he was so frustrated to the point he didn't even know what was happening in his life. Even though he did not see God, he said, but there's something I hold on to. I might not be seeing him. He's not with me, but I know he's aware. He did not lose that fact that God was aware. And God knows the path he will take. God is aware about the journey and God knows how it's going to end. And he says, what is happening? I am so confident that he who has started even this journey that looks like a pain will complete it. And Job says, when he has finished with all this fire, <laughs> this is my outcome. Does this goal looks like victory to you? Does this goal looks like victory? And I'm here to remind somebody, when God is finished with you in the name of Jesus, you will come out as gold. When God is finished with you, you will come out as a testimony. When God is finished with you, many people will find strength in your assurance in the name of Jesus. That was God. He was talking, it was his own testimony from the place of confidence of a finisher. And he finished though. His own did not kill him, your own will not kill you. He said, when he finished, when he has tested me, I will come out. As a victor, I will come out in victory. I might be lost on the path, but if I can just wake up and I see a new day, that's all I need. Because the greatest strategy for you and I, strategy, is the fact that you die physically. That's when they say the journey is over, before you continue life after this. But if I can still have breath, number two, strength. Then there's hope for the future. There is hope for the future. And this was the confidence. This particular statement he made could take him for the next months. I'm not seeing you, but I know you are there. Confidence of a finisher. That because he has started, I don't know when. If anybody knows me, always smiles. I don't know when. I don't know how. But one thing I know, that for sure. It's going to happen. Now, I might not be, that's 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 the uncertainty. And that's the way the Father has made it to be. He will just be looking at you. But he's seen you. And he sees everything you go through. He sees everything you go through. Job's confidence in God did not waver. Job kept having this confidence of a finisher. I will come out as gold. And of course, he came out better. He came out better because he believed in the anointing of the finisher. He believed in the one who started the good work in his life. Just like Paul's testament, I am so sure that God is going to finish. You will leave today's fellowship knowing that I am so sure that even this child who is a concern, you know, sometimes your children may be acting you after maybe you have been praying, you have been doing, and you are looking at this attitude. This one is Antichrist now. 
I am so confident that this child is a project in God's hand. I'm so confident that this one will make heaven. It doesn't matter that you're doing. I'm so confident that you will finish well. I'm so confident that I will not cry over you. I'm so confident that I will not look for you in jail, in the wrong places. I'm so confident, the confident of a finisher. Your end, your latter days will be sweet. I am confident. It is better for anything to be tested. You will go through fire. In that process, what is your confidence? What is your confidence? Because surely if you put it on age, you will easily give up. If you put it on the wear and tear of human being, you will easily give up. If you put it even on our abilities and our strength, you will easily give up. But if you can anchor on that confidence of the Father, that same confidence is what took Rahab to finish as a victor. Oh, yes. You always hear me talking about the life of Rahab. That same confidence. But before we even go, put me Job chapter 13. Just to show you that Job chapter 13 verse 15, that Job did not waver. He had confidence. Before I leave Job, Job chapter 13 verse 15. The Bible says, he said, though he slay me, yet. It is the yet that is the point of emphasis. There may be a slay. There may be some weakness. There may be some disappointment. But I will still trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before the Lord. It doesn't matter what situation has slain me. But my trust will still be on the anointing of the finisher. The one who is able to make me come out as good. And I was talking about Rehab. I said in the few seconds I have to finish. Rehab finished very strong. Not like the way she started. She finished on a victory note. She finished as a victor. One thing got her to that point. The confidence she had in the God of Israel. Even though she was not from Israel. And we know the story. When the spies came. She was the one who even gingered them and she said, I trust in your God. I know that your God is able to deliver. I know your God is able to do what he says. And all God was looking was that confidence. And God was like, if this woman has confidence in me like that. And you remember what we said, that even if we are faithless, he's faithful because he cannot disown himself. Why would I not show up for this person? And this is how God showed up for Rehab alone. Because of the confidence he had. She had so much trusted this God that she developed this personal conviction about the God of Israel. And she knew that even though it has not yet, we have not yet been captured. <laughs> I know that if God has said so, he will do it. And she held on to that testimony. It must be a personal conviction you have. What about roots? After we have held on to that testimony, not that it was easy, but at the end of the day, she became the person which the lineage of Jesus came out from because of the confidence she had. And look at how her later life was sweet, the confidence of the finisher. You know what? Even Ruth herself, we know the story of Ruth. She had confidence that following her mother-in-law, and not just for her mother-in-law, and that's why Ruth was saying that your God will do what will be my God, and your people will be my people. There was the confidence she had in the God of Israel. She was a Moabite, we know. But she knew that her life, you know, that this is it. They are saying even the steps of faith we take, what propels you to take certain steps is there must be a particular conviction. What I'm trying to explain to you is that without a certain conviction, you can't finish as a victim. What will help you to finish without losing your mind? There must be something inside of you propelling you, giving you that, 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 that audacity to keep moving forward. It is the confidence of a finisher. And that confidence is tied to our total trust in the God who started this work. It's the same confidence I have over TTW. The same confidence I have over anything I'm doing. That is not going to end like this. It doesn't matter how long. When he is finished with you and I, he will complete the work. Because God is so interested to showcase you. Just imagine God not doing that thing in your life. He will look like a failure. And because he cannot fail, so he has to come true. 
But most often, we it's not easy. But even though it's not easy, hold on to that which is what the truth. When we talk about confidence, we're talking about the conviction you have about the truth. And if it is the truth, it means you can hold on to it. And we see how Ruth had the confidence of the finisher. That is why she could align herself with Naomi. Because Naomi belonged to the tribe of those people who belong to Jesus. And the scripture made it. She now said, this is my confession. He said, the God you serve will be my God. The Moabites were not serving the God of Israel. And so she could not stay in, 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 in that land. In her land of origin, even when her mother-in-law said, please just stay, I have no connection to you. She said, I'm going to follow you. What prepared her? Life, the Bible even said when they came back, they didn't have anything. They didn't have what to eat. They had lost everything. So at the time she was making the decision, she was not making it on a platform of abundance. But what made her to come out and marry a rich man, had so much blessing, became from nothing to something, was the confidence in the God of Israel. She was so convinced that even though life has been like this, losing her father-in-law, her husband, her brother-in-law, even though they had lost everything, that God was going to restore them, that thing made her to follow her mother-in-law back. So she had confidence in the God of Israel and she began to take certain steps. And because of that confidence, her end, her later life was so sweet. Don't allow the enemy steal this from you. Even if he will take anything, he shouldn't take your conviction about God's ability. He should not take your conviction about God's, you know, assurance of finishing a good work. And that is the most amazing thing is that the work is good. Then why will the end not be good? He has started a good work. He has finished salvation. He will finish that issue. He will come true for their, your health. He will come true for you in marriage. He will come true for you in the life of your children. Don't be so scared because they are project in his hands. He will come true for them. God will finish that work. This is the confidence we have as a finisher if we finish as a victor. And so because of Ruth's confidence, she was able to finish as a victory, as a victor, sorry. And the last person, if I'll give an example, and if you have not shared the video, please go ahead and share the video and be a blessing to somebody. Please share the video. TTW women, please share the video. The last person, what about Esther? You remember? That's why sometimes this confidence we talk about, the enemy can try to bring his own fear, but you are holding on to that thing. When she wanted to go see the king, she said, if I perish, I perish. She said, but I'm going. That bet I'm going, is the, that's the only thing she, she had with her. If I perish, I perish. Even if it means I need to die. But there was a conviction that she could not die. Why? Because she had entrusted the decision in the hands of the one who cannot die. And so you can't be entrusting something in the hands of the one who is not sleeping and cannot die. Because in my hands, now what if I die? The thing is, is dead. But he, she knew that the, the one who cannot die, if he carries that project, then she cannot die. So she had confidence in the finisher. Any good works have been started. She was already in the palace. We know how comfortable she was. She had all the mates and everything. The good work was there. But the question was, how was she going to end? The uncle reminded her, Mordecai. How was the end going to look like? And so she needed, because she was so relaxed, the uncle now said, no, 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 no. You don't even know what you're doing. And that is when her eyes got open. She went back to the one who started the project. She went back to the one who brought her to the palace. She knew that that was an assignment. And the scripture makes us to understand. It was the confidence she had in the finisher. The Lord came true for her. The end result, her finding favor. She was not put to death. Because we knew it was either a death or a life thing. But because she carried the finisher law, and she couldn't carry the finisher, she didn't have that conviction inside of her. She prayed and she trusted God that if I go and I see this man, this man cannot kill me. Because who says a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it so? Who can decree? Who can establish? Who has the final say? Who can speak when God has not spoken? And that thing becomes... The all and all. When there is a war, that is final. And that cannot be reversed if, the, if, if he says so. I was here this morning to encourage you about the confidence 
of a finisher. And our confidence is in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. That he who had begun a good work, do not fear. Two months is too much for daddy to do a lot of things. There may so many things that may not be finished in 2024, but most of you, you use your eyes to see the beginning of them. And by the time we enter 2025, you'll be rounding up. Be confident that is the rewarder of those who serve him. Be confident that even though he tries you, you come out as good. Be confident that God is so interested in your life that he can't use your life to showcase his inabilities because he doesn't have one. Be confident that God wants the best for you, more than the best you want for your own children. That is the confidence of a finisher. And if you finish on the victory note, you will have that confidence. The scripture says, let this mind be in you. That is what? In Christ Jesus. It means you need to carry the mind of Christ to be able to prevail through life. Not your own mindset. Let this mind be in you. Carry the mind of Christ. His intention is to make you become more and more like him. In that the Father is being glorified. Let this mind be in you. That is in Christ Jesus. Jesus has never taught us a failure. And that is why he did not fail. Just imagine that it was me, the saint, to do that assignment. I'm sure I would have led it. Because it would have been too much for me. But God is faithful. God is faithful. If you have the same mindset day in, day out, you enter December, you will not enter depressed. You know that even if he didn't come for December, is this not general? Is general not coming? He's there. He sees me. He watches me. And he must finish it. He's compelled to do it. And so leave it in his hands. Because God is faithful. God will come true for you. It's not yet over. God is faithful. And I just want us to pray this morning. We're going to ask God. Are you losing heart? Are you fainting? You're going to be asking God for that courage and that confidence to move forward. If, if Paul can be in prison and have this testimony, <laughs> it means you too can have the same testimony. If someone can be in chains and say, I know. The scripture says, I know my Redeemer live it. He said, when I call, he answered. Now, we are not sure of the time. The Bible says, a thousand years is like one day before me. And a day is like a thousand years. That is God for you and I. We are the ones living in time. We are the ones counting the calendar. But God is looking and he has a time frame for each of your story. The good thing is the assurance you have that certainly when this time is up, his glory will be open for everybody to see. And you are going to go before the Father. I refuse to fail before the day of glory. If I refuse not to be found, I always, one thing I've always loved about the life of Zachariah, I kept asking, just imagine that that day, the Bible says he was appointed for Zachariah to be. He was the one to burn incense in the temple. And just imagine that was the day assigned for the angel of the Lord to bring his gift. Just imagine that the angel of the Lord came and Zachariah was not there. What would have happened? God forbid that in the day of my answer, I'm absent. In the day of my visitation, I'm not there. God forbid. You're going to be asking God, Father, courage. Father, courage. Let that mind of Christ be embedded inside of me. Let that weakness be taken. Let it be an exchange. This morning, you have come to meet with the Father. You didn't come to meet with me. Let there be an exchange. That you have started this work. I'm living with this mindset. You will complete it. I know you are faithful. I know you are faithful. Believe it. What I want you to do is to believe it. You have heard it before, but I just came to let you know that having the conviction means you should own it. Carry it along with you day in, day out. Own it. That the Father thinks well towards me. And that's all I need. Doesn't matter. He thinks well towards me. He thinks well towards me. And so you go before the Father and begin to cry out. I say, Lord, help me. The confidence of a finisher is that he who has started a good work. That was false testimony. It wasn't Jesus. It wasn't God himself. He was talking on behalf of somebody else's ability. And that word still makes sense up to today in you and I, our life. 
you have called me, I am a project, and I know you will use me to finish that project. Why not lift up your voice and begin to ask the Father? Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the mind of Christ that is being embedded and distributed among us this morning. We thank you for the ability for us to be able to have the confidence that you are not ready to leave us at any given point. That the end of any process or any journey is us coming out as gold. That our stories will be told in the ends of the end of the earth. And that our lives will begin to bring you glory. We thank you that even though we are not seeing your hand in certain challenges, in certain health issues, in certain areas of our lives, in our families, we can feel the heartbeat of the Father. Your hands may not be felt, but we know that you are always there for us. Even when we cannot trace you, we know that you do not sleep over our issues. Father, we thank you because this is the confidence we have in you. That he who has begun a good work in the life of this woman listening to me, in the life of my beloved sister, I don't know the project, you have different projects. Salvation has been given unto all of us. Yes, we know. But Father, you who have begun a good work in the life of this woman listening to me this morning, you are capable, you have the ability, you have the resources, you have everything that is needed to complete it. When you started the beginning, you did not console us. And so you ended it without consoling us. We are confident that this one too, we have been struggling to end it. And because we did not start it, we have failed in ending it. But we know that it is only the one who has started that has the ability to be able to complete it. Therefore, I pray for every woman under the sound of my voice this morning. Lord, I ask that because the enemy did not stop them from hearing their, your word this morning, the enemy cannot take them to the place of weariness in the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority over every garment of heaviness that has been poured upon the life of your people because I have never seen where you failed in your ability. You have reminded us this morning that regardless of how faithless we are, you are faithful because you cannot you cannot change your personality you cannot abandon yourself we cannot separate faithfulness from you we cannot separate goodness from you we cannot separate comfort from you we cannot separate the greatness of your magnitude from you you are the same person that can turn everything around Oh God, I pray for these women and I ask, oh God, that you fortify them to be able to finish and, and work with you in this project that you are carrying on in their life. For the privilege, I want you to know that it is a privilege to even be used by God to carry any project. You can imagine that by the course, you person, by the course, you say, I want you to do something. <laughs> you never find out how much. You just know that his, his, his personality, he can't give you any kind of thing. You know that. You will just say yes before you find out that how much are you going to pay me. His magnitude, his status alone, you say, I just give me, if I just having it on your CV alone, that he was the one who sent you. <laughs> Even if you were not paid, you know, this man is so, he's so, he's so intelligent not to give me something substantial. The only thing is that we go, sometimes we forget so easily. So if God can see your life like that, see your life, look at your person. In all the people on planet Earth, he chose you. Never you say, why is it me? He chose you to go through any season of your life. It's a privilege. Count it all joy, the scripture says. He said, when you go through diverse, 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 mine is different from yours. Count it all joy. That is the confidence of a Christian. That is the confidence of a child of God. Count it all joy. When you go through diverse temptation, diverse tribulation, it is because of the magnitude of the one who started the journey. That's the problem. That's the confidence I'm talking about this morning. It's not because of the issue. It's just the one who is backing you up. His payment is huge. His payment, his end is so nice. Hey, his end is so, he, he beautifies it. The Bible says he make it which he doesn't add sorrow to it. <laughs> There's no regret to your end, to your finishing. Lord, I pray for every woman under the sound of my voice. It doesn't matter the season of their life. It doesn't matter the pressures of their life. This I am confident like Paul. That you are more than faithful to complete a journey. I thank you for their processes. 
I thank you for that area now, that season that looks wayward and it looks like there's no light around it. I thank you just holding on. All I'm doing today is to hold on to that which you have said concerning them. I thank you because I know in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Oh God, thank you for the pleasures in advance. Thank you for the joy. The Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, of these women, ah, it was like a dream. Your mouth shall be filled with laughter. It's a testimony of somebody. Your mouth shall be filled with laughter before the end of this year. The Lord will so much come complete that particular project in your life that it will become like a dream that is the faithfulness of our father i give you praise i take authority over every form of heaviness every garment of shame upon the life of your people every form of manipulation that the enemy has put them inside every form of drought in depression and in anxiety i take authority over that spirit let the garment of praise be released upon your people father i pray in the name of jesus from this moment women begin to rise up and continue in that project with you begin to rise up and walk in partnership with you because the devil has no plan and power over the life of your people and I am trusting you, my God. 2024 is still filled with so many packages. I thank you for the distribution of your blessing upon the life of your people. I thank you for those channels and portals you are opening, even in this last two months of the year. I give you praise and I give you glory because of that which you are set to do. Thank you, faithful Father. It takes just a day for the Lord to turn everything around. It takes an hour for you to meet with that thing you have been wishing to meet for so many years it takes few seconds for that relationship to be established and it begins to lead to something else father we thank you for this is the confidence we have <laughs> this is the we have no other thing every other thing has failed but if we hold on to the confidence this is all we have that you are faithful to complete father may your name be glorified i thank you for this week and i thank you for what you are set to do we anticipate and we are convinced that this week will be better than last week. We are convinced that you have kept some beautiful things for us. Order our steps because the Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. We will not be victims of tears, victims of pain, victims of emergency, victims of casualty. The Lord keep us. The Lord sustain us. The Lord's right hand be upon our life. Release your angels to give charge over us. In the name of Jesus Christ. And even as we depart from this life session, your presence, your comfort will never leave us. Your wisdom will shield us at every given time. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Father, I give you praise and I give you glory. Let your name be glorified forever. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed and we have given thanks. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Facebook family, for joining us this morning. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. His countenance be so bright upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I will see you again on Thursday. I think Thursday is the end of the month as we will be entering November by the message of God. From now, remain blessed. And I love you all. Have a wonderful day. And a wonderful day.